fun to ask Julie anything, February edition. Our special guest tonight, if you didn't already know, is Mr. Evan Doggett from Doggett Style, Doggett Style Dog Training. Evan, thanks for joining myself and Julie tonight. Glad to have you here. And all these other wonderful people that I can't see, but I wish I could, but I can't. Nice to see everyone or whatever. Feel, feel your online presence. Absolutely. It's all, all part of the community. Just making sure everyone can hear us. If you have questions, we're going to take them later in the session. Uh, Evan and Julie are going to do a little bit of a one on one. And the topic we're going to be touching on is navigating cancer. Without further ado, Julie, I'm going to let you and Evan get started. I think Evan has a few questions. You guys, you guys vibe really well. So I'll let you get down, get down to business. My problem hey, is that I'm really, you? I'm really shy. So I'm not really sure. Liar. <laughs> yeah. <I'm not> right. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to, are you taking off or are you just going to stay there for a bit? I'm yeah. here. Yeah, okay. I'm here. Okay. All right. Well, hi everybody. Um, this was like a total improv, really like, hey, call Evan at, I, I don't even know, Stephanie, what time was it? Like four o'clock? Something, something like that. <laughs> and because um, usually they're asking me anything, they're just basically ask me anything. And I don't know what happened, but today when you sent me that, the, you know, here's the, the email for us for to, to go out. And I was like, you know what we should do? um call her old friend Evan yeah well I think that that um so many of the questions that you were asking me a little while ago um I felt were really important for their questions that I've heard before and I feel I felt like because it was you that this, it would be important if we could to share some of those questions with a broader um, audience of people that, that will either at some point in their life know someone or deal with some, their own situation with their, their dog uh, having cancer or their cat or horse or loved one person. Yeah um at some at some stage so I just thought it was really important so uh, I guess I don't know if everyone looked at the email that went out of an hour ago uh Evan Evan went through a pretty hardcore uh loss of his heart dog uh not not too long ago and when I was working with him a little bit uh like I said he had some really I think questions that are important for everyone to hear. So I thought, well, rather than, I think him, I think we're going to do something on his channel too at some point. But I thought, what better, what better way to start out February, considering February is heart month, right? Like love and oh, Valentine's cool. and stuff like that, with uh, a big part of love that we lose inevitably, no matter what, whether they live to their, to their full extent, if we're going to lose animals in our life, just, just strictly because of our, our, the differences in um, longevity. So I thought it would be a nice uh, segue into the month of March and love and figuring out how do we, how do we deal with that? How do we look at that? So without further adieu <laughs> um we haven't even practiced this he does i don't know what he's gonna ask me I don't even know. <laughs> he knows what he's gonna ask me but um uh why don't we just start uh yeah i think you know to give everyone a little bit of context so i um i adopted rush in 2011 spca montreal um very quickly kind of walked in I was just supposed to be there I was just coming back from Argentina on an exchange I was only supposed to go to the SBCA to walk dogs for a therapeutic experience uh for me and to walk dogs because you know I'm a crazy dog person that's what you do when you're trying to kill uh 12 hours while you're 
then girlfriend was at work. We would go to the SPCA and walk dogs. What else am I supposed to do? <laughs> and I left with one. I left with Rush and it that much, that close to costing me my what then became marriage uh, and two boys <laughs> later. And that's a, that's a whole, whole story going on the podcast very soon. Um, and yeah, so it, it became this adventure of learning how to manage this wild dog that was busting out of crates and chewing up. I think I developed a, a love for glasses because I went through so many pairs because he would <laughs> <laughs> crunch them and reactive and, and you know, um, aggressive with horses and cats and, and all of those things. And you'll see pictures with Rush, you know, with I've got three cats and, you know, lived on a cutting ranch in BC and all kinds of stuff that all kinds of hurdles that we got through. But because Rush was always teaching me or I was always open to learning more and more and more from him when he got diagnosed a month ago with a tumor on his liver and, um, you know, Julie and I talked, the first thing that she said to me which was really hard to hear at the time because you know when people try to give you advice you're like I don't need advice right now I, <laughs> I need the answer I need the answer I don't need you know I need questions. the cure <laughs> I need the cure I don't need contemplative questions but it was the thing that stuck with me the most is what is Rush teaching you why now and what is it that he's trying to teach you right now and when I heard that I went like it's not trying to teach me anything other than <laughs> how to fix him but it's, it's been such a deep question that I think has is, is just brought me through this whole thing and really made me reflect on what am I experiencing right now as opposed to in a larger sense, as opposed to getting it's because cancer, like any illness, um, is very overwhelming, can be if you let it be anyway. It's, you know, there's, it's like anything, like if you Google how to get my dog to not pull me on the leash. And you're just bombarded with Dr. Google that tells you all these million different things. And there's so many different ways of doing everything that it can be really overwhelming. But when it comes back to like, what, what am I learning in a greater, greater scheme of things has been the thing that's really um, led me through that experience. So Rush was diagnosed, let's say for argument's sake, five weeks ago, and he passed two weeks ago. So for three intensive weeks, we were dealing with cancer. Um, this tumor um, on his liver. And one of the things that really hurt was, you know, you go through all these different levels of grief initially, and um, it was, you reflect on all the things you did wrong, right? And, uh, and all of those things. So some of the things that I was initially asking Julie, besides medical things, um, which, you know, I definitely want to talk about the products that, because I thought I was doing everything right, you know, like he was eating a raw diet, not for the whole time that I had him, and God knows when he was neutered and, and all that other stuff. Um, but, you know, like religiously for the past couple of years, we've been feeding a raw diet and, and only as of, man, when did I discover you guys? maybe a year ago now, right? Um, starting to use Adore Beast products and you can't, you can't go back there, right? You can't go back to all the things you didn't do. You will, but you need to go, okay, move past it because it's not, it's not helpful. So um, what were, because there is, as all of you know, Julie is just filled of knowledge and love and wisdom. And sometimes you can only take in so much at a time. So where did we start? Julie, where did we start when it was initially Russia's cancer? What was the what was the first thing that you might have said to me to kind of kick off this this journey? I'm pretty sure. I mean, every time I talk to someone, it's an individual conversation, right? But I think um, what I try and do with with any kind of disease, it doesn't matter whether it's cancer or Cushing's. Um, it's, you know, take a step back. For sure, we're going to be looking at how do we uh, support this body to do what it can, 
right? Like whether that's going down the road of healing or a longer prognosis or, you know, three months, three weeks, three days, three years, we don't know. Nobody knows that. And that's, that's something that we have to be okay with. No one, nobody knows, you know, how long that process is, is going to be. And I feel like while it's important to try and put in all the steps that we can to, to make that this life be as joyous as possible, right? So not how long it's going to be, but how joyous is it going to be? And I think I probably said something like that to you, but more on the lines of if I could take anything back would be when my horse got sick and I spent three full years doing nothing but trying to save his life. And when he died, I realized in that moment that I probably spent six months with him of those three years because the rest of the time my whole being was in finding a way to cure it. So I, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure I said to you, I told you about Joseph and I said, whatever you do, just try and don't think we're not going to do everything we possibly can because we mm. are, but, but don't get lost in curing him and, and not spend time with him. Right. And that's, and that's what I heard was that still be there mentally and, and physically and emotionally for the animal, because it's very easy. Cause you're going to go to, you're going to, you're going to pull up your smartphone. You're going to, you're going to get on Google. You're going to be on, the forums, you're going to be all those things. And not to say don't, don't do that. But what I what I did was I had to first and foremost, because you had talked, you had also mentioned um, about being a hot mess, <laughs> which is what, what happens when your best friend gets diagnosed with cancer, or your, your, your spouse or your child or, you know, and this, this dog is, you know, is my kid. And so, um, was I knew you had talked about, you know, some of the, the work that um, Isla, Dr. Isla Fishburne had done about, you know, being stressed and hormones and all that stuff and then petting your dog or, or using your dog as a cry pillow. Um, and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll admit, I definitely broke down a couple of times in front of them. And it's, and I broke down after I knew that, that it was, that it was time that, that we were, that we were, that we were at that stage. And he seemed pretty stoic dude um seemed seemed to be okay with it and I couldn't help myself and it just kind of was but the journey since we don't know how long it was rushes was very short but you know think if you have three years for me what I took from that was like the next day was I started working out like working out really watching what I was eating because I knew I know through experience I'm you know in my early 30s now but I'm I'm I really had to do a lot of introspective of like, when I eat this much chocolate, I hate myself. When I uh, don't exercise, I feel like this. When I watch this much TV, because part, part of you just wants to shut down and quit. Part of you wants to do this. But I know for me uh, and everybody that I know that physical exercise boosts endorphins, boosts dopamine. It makes you feel good so that, you, so that you're equipped mentally to deal with the hard the hard thing when you do physically hard things it makes you equipped mentally to deal with the hard things because it's it's hard I mean your your best friend gets cancer it's uh it's hard so I knew that I that I wanted to have that joy and that my relationship with Rush was always play and tactile and be rough it wasn't uh sit around and cuddle and if that's if that's your thing that's your thing I I, I just did a a podcast about that like how you are with your dog is, is up to you. It's, it's your relationship. Your relationship. Right? Yeah. Totally. And nobody should, uh, cause somebody stepped in on a comment and was like, you should have been more like this with your dog. And I did not appreciate that. Um, I don't appreciate anybody telling me what I should or shouldn't do, nor does anybody. And, and, uh, I think that's where it's, these are all I hope that you guys interpret that as, as these are all suggestions of you don't have to work out uh, when your dog gets cancer. That was my journey. And it no, really did. You don't. It really yeah. did help me. Yeah. Um, for but sure. Think, but that, that was huge. What you had said about 
be present for your dog as much as possible. It was, it, it was super powerful, super grateful for that advice. And I, and I think that, um, you know, it is, it is rough. It's, it's rough when, when anybody dies or anything dies. And, but I think a big thing too, just, just to, to, bring in some of the, some of the background stuff is that when you think about your dog, remember, I, I think I said this to you just the, the day that you were going to, the day that he was going to leave. I had that little conversation with you prior to it. We don't, we don't know, right? Like, like if you hadn't got him, I know it doesn't, it doesn't help in that moment. But if you had showed up, at I this, know where you're going with this. It did, it did. So, so if you, if you hadn't shown up at that SPCA and you hadn't taken him for a walk and you hadn't like, how long would a dog have lasted with that kind of emotional baggage that he had, or, you know, like all the trauma that he must've gone through, what his, what his space and his energy must've been like. Not a lot of people would be would have equipped to deal with that dog. He showed up in your life for a reason, right? And that reason in that time back then served a purpose of him finding a space in the world where he felt safe and you finding a space in your world that basically created your career, right? So those moments were perfectly timed. They were timed perfectly in your life and perfectly in his life. We don't know that this, that his passing, cause I don't believe in death. We don't, we don't know that his, his choice and his decision of, of when he's chosen to move into his next realm is, is in perfect timing for you as well in order to, for you to have more tools and, and be more equipped to help more dogs. Because I really believe that. Like I, be, I believe all of the, you know, all of the animals that have been really close in my life to me that have died early or not as, didn't live as long as I, I wanted them to, or um, they, they equipped me in my vet hospital to understand what life really is, really is and how every individual piece that there's something to learn. Every one of my animals gave me a gift to help other animals, to help myself, to help other animals, to help people. And if their life expectancy and their, their time here wasn't what it was, I wouldn't have learned that gift. And my mom said to me once that the, the best gift you can give back to your animal is, is learn the lesson they're here to give you because that's why they're here. That's why they're here. They're little angels, right? That these little sentient beings that come in and they're doing going to do a job and the whole entire time they're here, they're happy. They're way happier than we are. <laughs> it makes it doesn't make, doesn't take as much to make them happy as it does us. Yeah. So, so it's, it's, they're uh, not worried about their Instagram account. That's, that's the big yeah, you know, and and I think that when we lose ourselves in finding a cure and not wanting them to die and what that piece of what they're here to teach us often comes in that state when we're when we're we're forced to be present with them, right? We're 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 forced to be like I have to be here. I have to be like I have to be finding the cure. Well, actually, yeah, look, try, right? But, but now's the time to be present to, to realize what gift this is giving to you, you know, cause it, it, I don't know anyone that has anyone that's ever lost a dog or a cat or a horse or even a human. I don't know. I don't know anyone that hasn't come to me and said, if I'd only done this with them, if I'd only done that with them, if I'd only, if I'd only, you know, oh my gosh, I 
just, you know, I realized as soon as, you know, he died that, you know, this is what I was like before he got here. And this is what I'm like now. And if I hadn't had him, he, like, there's so much I can't, like, I would be here for five hours trying to remember all of the things that people have learned. And, and what the unfortunate thing is, or not unfortunate, it's what you can help teach people now is, is spend time with your dog, spend time with your cat. Like I, I would say to people when, you know, when COVID first happened, when you're petting your cat and you're inside, let the rest of your set, you're, you're isolated. You can't go out, but what you should be doing then is if we can't use our physical bodies to go out or be, you know, you know, watch a movie in the theater or, you know, go and go and hear a live band or whatever, when you're sitting and you're petting your cat, allow your senses of looking at the different colors of their fur, right? Smelling them, feeling them, allow our senses that we completely ignore because we're so bombarded with uh, um, outside influences, right? To keep our minds off of being present. Well, being present isn't just sitting and going, okay, I'm being present, I'm right here. It's got nothing, it's really got nothing to do with that. It's got to do with everything that comes with being present. And there's there's so much, right? There's so much. So, so it, 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 it is, it's, and, and the other thing I think I did tell you that I think is really important, like you would not believe the amount of people that I've, people have come to me and said, why did my dog die? Why did my dog get cancer? It's on raw food. He's had a really great life. He's running around and jumping and playing and, and, you know, all of a sudden, and now he's dead three weeks later, how come he couldn't last two months later, or five years later? Like why you would think that yeah. a dog this healthy would be able to get over it. And what's a really important thing to hear is that often it's the opposite. Like animals will come, would have come to my clinic with cancer and they've been like, they've been like vaccinated at the yin yang and on dry food and I start treating them and they have a three month prognosis and they live for five more years or they live for three more years. And right. it's because all of a sudden we're giving them all of these tools to be healthy. Yeah. And the dogs like your dog, probably when I was mentioning to you that your dog probably had that for a really long time no one knew and you did it was he was sustaining because he was so healthy because he, kept, he was doing so, all the things right and it's not even just sustaining it's it's like the amount of animals that i've seen and people go you people don't believe that he's got cancer like look at him but we knew he had cancer he does have cancer and even if he had cancer and he was he lived for three more months but people couldn't believe that he had cancer we're so twisted to think that if they have cancer, they have to look like hell and be and suffer for a really long time. Yeah. And that's actually not true, especially with animals. Animals can, can, can deal really well and have incredible quality of life and have cancer. And we don't even know. Right. Because yeah, I mean, look at Rush, he was arguably 12 to 14 years old um and it was like boom three weeks yeah so yeah t t and I i'm happy for point. you that it was three weeks i have yeah. to and, and i mean that and i think you knew that yeah. i would not i would not wish anything else i would not wish that anything else happened other than if you could have lived a completely normal healthy life for three more years yeah, but in in the scenario of what we were dealing with we Sue Armstrong and I said that in, in England, we always say that we, 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 we wish for everything that we love to be like an airplane ride, their life. So you have a takeoff and it's exciting and you know, you're born and then you come to a spot and you have this pretty smooth sailing journey and you have some bumps and you hit some turbulence, but you get back on track, but your decline is what's really important that you're that you're having this awesome ride and then the, when the decline happens it's grad it's it's quick and semi-seamless and that to 
to us is 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 what it, what we would want for everyone and your dog had that but it's just shocking because it was so fast yeah. right yeah and it's it's that expectation you know I, I i talked to a friend of mine um and he often refers to not knowing what he'll do when his dog passes and it's that expectation that we put i put the expectation on rush that he would live at least another seven years oh yeah like, <laughs> running wide open behind the four wheeler, you know, a month prior to that, just wild and full of life and slowing down. Cause he was like 12, but still like would run eight kilometers a day behind the four wheeler. And like, I've been expecting Mufasa, my Pyrenees to go for years now. <laughs> he just keep trugging out and that, you know, wagging his big tail and, and all that. And, uh, you know, it's that expectation. It was the almost put the pressure on him like you have to live another seven years but he didn't know me anything and it and I don't know that it was that but it's that when you put these massive expectations out the fall is going to be that much bigger and it was it's one of those things where you know it's going to happen but you're and you're never prepared for it but it's being open to the lessons and realizing that you know I think I think the thing that I took away the most is the journey doesn't end here, that that descent happens, but it's just, it just goes in a different direction, direction. you know, yeah. and I really felt that when, when he left, I really, I really did feel that. Um, and it pushed me. I, and then afterwards was like a friggin' roller coaster emotionally. I felt relieved for him. I felt relieved for me the day after I was like, you know, it was almost like a celebration, like it was dancing and making videos and, and all that stuff. And I felt relieved in a way of knowing that the, the, there wasn't going to be any more suffering for him going through all those emotions. And then the week afterwards was, was quite challenging. And it was, um, again, it, it, I had to really force myself to take care of myself and, and be okay with uh, the fact that I haven't had a lot of death in my life. My grandmother died uh, this year, which has been the closest person. Everyone else died when I was quite young. My parents are healthy and, you know, my sister and, and my friends are, all, you know, I'm still pretty young. So I, I haven't been faced with that a lot. Um, so it was really challenging, but it was, it was pushed to that next level yesterday when I called and, and the reason I tell this story and I'm going to put it on YouTube and I'm going to put it on TikTok, I'm going to put it everywhere because I think it's very important because it's that expectation. And it was this final lesson, probably not the final one. I'm sure he's got a few tricks up his sleeve, but <laughs> um, this one of this most apparent lessons and this thing that I want, I don't want anyone else to have to go through this. I called the vet yesterday and I said, Hey, what? I didn't get a call back about Rush's plot number for his burial. Um, going to the pet cemetery, you know, we want to go and honor him and, and whatever. Um, and the receptionist said, Oh yeah, just a sec. I'll, I'll be right back. And, uh, the head receptionist picked up and this is a vet clinic that I know very well and I love them and they know me and, you know, um, very, very strong relationship. And she said, Evan, hi, um, Rush didn't get buried. You, he didn't go to the pet cemetery. You chose for burial and I said yeah what does burial mean it burial means burial for those of you that don't know the standard practice at a vet clinic is for their body to go to the landfill site and that's what they referred to as burial as someone that spends um every day all day with their dogs and spends tens of thousands of dollars on them. What feels like per week, I didn't, I'm in a financial position where I, I didn't want that for my friend. And if that is the financial position that you're in, where that's the only option, um, it is what it is. And, and I had always said that our bodies and their bodies are just a vessel and it doesn't really it's a temple, but it also, once you're gone, it's your spirit and it's gone. And when I heard that he went to the landfill, it still fucking sucked. Um, it, it, cause it, cause it was that expectation. And so the final lesson, so 
the final lesson is for everyone to be so damn specific as to what your plan is if it's not the landfill, um, which again, if financially that's all you can afford, remember the following part of this story, which is that they are not their body. And it forced me to go so deep into that mental space, which was just going down into a depression. Um, this happened yesterday. And I had an appointment booked with my osteopath today to do a restorative breathing, a rebirthing, uh, what does he call it? Trop transentopic breathing or some sort of like regenerative breathing, breathing. thing where basically you're yeah. in and out of your nose and you're laying down and, and all of that stuff. And that happened today. I was on my way when I got the call from Steph um, to do this this evening. And I knew that this something very powerful is going to happen here. Uh, and I'm going to share this story. So I, I arrived there. I've never done anything like this today. Um, and I had the most amazing experience of my life. Um, I'm someone who in my past has just turned to the easy route, turn to drugs, turn to alcohol, uh, escape, book a trip and don't come back for a while, run away, run away. And this is the first time in my life that I had to stay in one spot and just breathe. And the most amazing thing that I never thought could ever happen, happened. Um, it was an inner body out of body experience where I literally lost control of my, just from breathing, just from laying on a table, breathing. My body had so much tension and rigidity that I was literally laying on the table like this, couldn't feel my hands from the fingers to there at all, gone. Um, sorry, someone's, can you still hear me? Yeah. And so frozen from here, and just floods of uh, emotion starting to happen after about 30 minutes of breathing. And then boom, there's this big, beautiful boxer brindle face. It looks like we based our logo off of the guy. <laughs> it's that special. And he showed up and all I could hear was play, play, play. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm not there anymore. And I started to cry and then boom, just an explosion of light and radiant love came over me and I wept like a baby and then I laughed like a clown and it was that final permission to go it's 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 just a vessel he's not he's not there although I still don't like the thought of his body being somewhere else I can't control that and you can't control what you can't control you can't control that your dog has cancer you know, you can't, you can't, there's things you can do to prevent it. And I thought I was doing all those things and it still happened. And the lesson is that, you know, the lesson is to be in the moment and, and, and to play and to love and whatever that lesson is for you, it might be, it might be different, but that was the lesson for Rush um, was he's, you know, we're all, we're all eternal. Yeah. I think I, think that that's a that's a anything to do with with the last day it's important to sort of be organized with that prior to you know um the amount of people that you know if if, if some if they can't come to the house you know especially with covid and stuff like that you know but even before I would say to people, okay, if you, if you, if you have to go see if they'll come to the car, like see if your vet will come and do it in the car. Cause lots of dogs, that's their second home is their, is their car. Yeah. Right. So, you know, put them in the back, put some, you know, if you have a relationship with your vet, like try and try and, um, uh, plan it. Like, I know it's not something that you really want to think about and plan, in the for it's, something it's, in the it, future well, it, it was almost more than that it was something that i was avoiding planning because right. it was like this isn't supposed to happen for seven years and that's why i know it's so important and why i'm going to keep telling this story of have a plan and quadruple friggin confirm get them to write on a piece of paper what your plan is uh, mm -hmm. for for your for your pet because you don't ever want 
that call to go there's there's no burial there's no there's you know and i don't know if it's because the world is so i'm just going to say it damn politically correct that we can't say that we're confusing burial with landfill right like we like there's got to be a way and i don't know if this has never happened before and i'm the first one but i hope that it never happens again that there's that confusion around and that's why and it's hard and that's why we got to talk about this stuff before your dog passes because your dog is going to die you are going to die everyone's going to die uh at some point so having a yeah. plan makes just makes I, things more predictable and she said she actually said to you landfill you went to the landfill that's what she said hmm. yeah that's what they do i guess I don't, I'm not, yeah. Did most cl many clinics cremate, right? They'll do either a they'll do a cremate like a, but if you don't ask for private, then they get a communal cremation, and then you can't take the ashes because it's with other, you know, fifteen other animals. But um, wow, that's yeah. Yeah, it was brutal. It was brutal, but it it again it forced me to either shut down and curl up in a ball, which I did initially. Um, and then it's like, okay, what's the lesson here, Evan? What, what can you give? Lesson? Less, yeah. Yeah. And that's going to keep happening. You yeah, know, I, sure. it, it would be nice if that was, I shouldn't say it would be nice because the more lessons that he leaves you with, the more he's helping other dogs and other, and other people and other hearts, right? Like the more he's, he's really, really, um, supporting that's where he's that's why he's still here because he's going to continue to do that through you you're just, just with those. you're his vessel now <laughs> <laughs> to help. Watch yes. Watch yes. i have permission to play yeah i would say the lesson that i that i learned the most from him with our time together was so for me being this you got to think this is it's not my first my first dog i, I was living in in bogota colombia um that dog Man, I, I guess I have a, a history of bad, not bad, I, I guess endings anyway, that he was he was actually stolen a couple of days before I moved. Oh yeah, Canada. you told me that. Ugh. Yeah, but but the the lesson that I learned from Rush, because you're gonna think I got this dog that was bad, right? That was doing all this stuff. Yeah. And so I did everything in my power to try to to try to change those things. And what I, I would say my number one takeaway from him was you need you need to respect the dog's character, their, their spirit. You need to accept that. It doesn't mean you need to accept bad behavior because my belief, doesn't need to be your belief, but my belief is that your number one responsibility is to keep that dog safe, right? If you take them as you're their guardian or you're their owner or pet parent or whatever, it's like, I get to keep my dog safe. So what does that mean? I got to keep them off the road. I got to make sure that they're not dragging me down the road. Uh, I got to make sure that they're not attacking other animals and things like that. I got to keep them safe, right? Because yeah. sometimes your dog inflicting damage can, you know, and, and bad for everybody. So I got to keep my animal safe and, and, but you can do that by still honoring the dog. So I get a lot of people that call, I just literally was talking to somebody that was saying that they want their dog gets in arguments with other dogs. Um, and he's a really dominant pushy guy by the sounds of it. And that's like, that's who he is. But it doesn't mean that we accept the fact that he's running around pinning every other dog, right? But we, but we go, okay, well, how can I still honor him being dominant without putting him in a situation that's gonna make the thing unsafe? So I think that's what I learned from Rush the most was, was like he was he was always excited to go somewhere new and to have a new adventure which means a lot of whining right a lot of pacing in the car no you can redirect and manipulate that a bit but ultimately i just learned to turn up the radio right was like <laughs> he's excited right like he's like excited that? to go somewhere and he gets excited to go to the same damn place every day and oh lord wouldn't it be great if i could be that excited to wake up and have a bowel movement right and i'm sure i'll get to some some point in my life where i am that where you might be <laughs> 
Well, I think, but you know, on, on the topic of cancer too, I, I think in the, in the cancer, in my cancer um, courses and lectures and stuff that I've done, I think, I think that's a, a really important piece, you know, like we, we look at, you know, you know, did you do everything right? Did you feed everything right? Did you give the right supplements? Did you do the right everything? And I think a, a, a big part of, of looking at cancer with people, animals, it doesn't matter, is suppression, right? And I think as a homeopath, we were, we were taught that suppression is probably one of the most harmful things to the body. So not being able to speak your views, not being able to stand up for yourself, not being able to get out into nature, not be able to like, admit you think of, you know, not being able to talk to your boss, like, like suppression, you know, suppressed by a, a, a partner. Um, I think, I think suppression is a massive, a massive um, uh, stress stress and, and, and it pushes down your ability to, for your, for your cells to, you know, for your, for your cells to actually, uh, function how they need to function. Right. So, you know, I think that with, with dogs and cats and horses, we, it's probably one of the number one, um, triggers for, for things for ill health is their inability to, um, be able to express Right. So I often say to people, you know, just like, think about it. You know, they're so excited to go for a walk and, and this happens because we've, er, we have to urbanize them. You know, you're, you're living in a condo and there's people living below you and people living beside you and it's, you come home and the dog knows it's going to go for a walk. And it's like, so excited. It's like the highlight of their day and they're running back and forth and they're barking and they're doing all this stuff. And you're like, you know, people are like freaking out, telling them to be quiet and stop barking. And it's like you, it's like me saying to you, stop being happy, stop laughing. You know, like it's, it's, there's, there really isn't a difference. Right. So we have to really try and be aware of the amount of times that we're suppressing them. Because I think from a health perspective, it's, it's, it's super, super, it's, it's equally as detrimental as, as vaccinations and dry dog food is, is the amount of suppression that we create in our animals. And it's, it's, and that's where there's times for redirecting behaviors too, right? Like there's certain things that like, if your dog is trying to kill your neighbor, different story, but, but, (laughs) but, but if your dog's excited when you come home and jumping up and things like that, like, can we get the leash on faster and get it at the door? Can we just change the cycle? Can we do something yeah. that, you know, am I fulfilling the dog in the morning or is it just, are they only getting 30 minutes or 20 minutes of exercise per day? And that, you know, that's another great lesson about, you know, the, the dog is in your life to teach you something, right? And mm-hmm. so that might be um, how to be more into nature. Because yeah, for just, sure. Learn about urban 100%. dogs is that you put them in the woods and they're just like, oh, I don't need to be aggressive anymore. Um, it's pretty, yeah, pretty amazing. Yeah, it, it's cool. So, so uh, what did we do product wise? What were the, some of the things that you, so Rush has cancer. What do I do? There were a few products that you made sure that I had right away. Do you mind tell me what they were? So it was, you know, he had a tumor on his liver, but um, you had said there was a few products right away that you're like, is he on these and why? Um, are you talking about products? Or are you talking about homeopathic remedies? Like all the stuff no, I sent no, you? No, pro- no products for your, your products. There was a few Adored Beast products. Okay. So one would have been liver tonic. Um, the other one would have been phytosynergy. And the other one would have probably been phytosflora. So, so he was the, on the liver tonic and the phytosflora, but not the synergy. What is it about the synergy that would have really helped? There? You mean prior to or before prior to, um, uh, well, phytosynergy is really, really has huge amounts of superoxide dismutase in it. Right. So it has the ability to so for so for regular humans what, right superoxide dismo- that that's a that's a uh, helps with scavenging free radicals and cell oxidation oxidation and 
Um, it helps the it helps to feed the nucleus of the cell. So it helps to keep cells healthy, basically. So when you're thinking about cancer, that's probably one of the number one things you want to think about is how do I keep cellular health, our cellular health, and 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 decreasing inflammation, right? And things that can cause inflammation are free radicals. So superoxide dismutase is an antioxidant. So it helps to um, stop the cells from becoming oxidized, rusty, stiff, sclerotic, diseased. You know, it keeps the structure solid so that things can't permeate them. Keeps so, them that's, so that's helping the cells. The phytosflora is helping the gut health, which is kind of the, the, well, the oven. The, Right. Yeah, the cool thing about phytosflora is the ability to modulate the immune system, right? So when we think of a lot of precursors to cancer or precursors to like, what do we want to do to try and derail cancer right from the very get go? You know, we want to do everything. And sometimes just you're just not going to be able to. Sometimes you are extending it. Like, that's why I said no one has a crystal ball. You could have a dog that dies of, like you're doing everything right and it dies of cancer when it's eight. But we don't know if you hadn't done everything right. If it hadn't died, would the, I saw dogs with cancer at 18 months in my practice, 18 months old, golden retrievers coming in with full blown lymphoma. So, so we don't know how long we would have been able to, you know, how long we actually did, did give them more longevity. We don't, we don't know that. And, um, so from a perspective of, of what, what I always try and say to people is what, if I can ever say anything about cancer is cancers in our body all the time. You have mm -hmm. cancer. I've got cancer cells. Dogs have cancer cells. Cancers are cancer is something. I, I actually don't like the word cancer. When I did my big lecture in Chicago, it was about using a different term. I just call it the C word. And because it's got such a, I know it's just such a stigma to it, right? Yeah. Like the minute that you mention that, you know, cancer is, is a, um, it takes a lot of dogs lives, but skin disease is the number one reason for elective euthanasia, but no one's scared of skin disease, right? So, yeah. so we really need to put some stuff into perspective because in my personal view, and this is not negating any cancer because I've had can animals die in my personal life with cancer, um, is that it, it ebbs and flows, right? It ebbs and flows. It's, it, it's, it's uh, what we want to do. It's not like we're fighting cancer. I hate when I hear that. I hate we have to fight cancer. Actually, we don't have to fight cancer because if we want to try and fight cancer, we're going to lose because it's right. really smart. Mm -hmm. So, and it's not that, and it's not an it, it's us. It's something yeah, you, that, yeah. that it gets triggered in us so that our cells should be dying naturally. Our cells should die. That's an important piece. So what happens with cancer is that it does, they don't die, right? They, they, the, the cells don't die properly and then they mutate and it's a big, you know, um, to, to try and just put it in layman's terms, what can happen is that a cell will be produced because of the lack of regular healthy cell death. It will produce a different type of cell. And because that cell is alone, guess what it does? Cells can't be alone, so it reproduces. So it reproduces to, to, to stay alive right? To, to, it's, it's not, cancer is not reproducing to kill us. It's reproducing because it's been mutated, it's been born, and then it realizes it's been born. And the first thing that anything does is procreate, right? And, and, and you know, it, it can't live, it can't live on its own. It has to be, it's like oh, all of us, we can't live alone. So I think when we look at cancer, we'd be way better off to take a perspective <laughs> but it's just it's just lonely you know then you it's a lonely cell if you pity cancer you're better off it's a better mindset well it's angry at it but because when you seriously when you think about yeah. it if 
the body has an incredible ability to to rebalance and i always look at things like homeostasis which is the body's innate intelligence to be able to rebalance so if you've got if you've got if you've got something wrong with you and i came and you i said to you okay you've got eczema we got to figure out how to figure out you know like let's look because eczema can be pretty intense right it can it can it can it's a it's a it's an expression of a much deeper disease right of, of something really going on and i and i feel like when when we actually with dogs especially have the final diagnosis of cancer what's happened like i'm not saying this with your dog because it, i don't i'm not saying it with anybody's dog but when i when i when a dog's body becomes out of balance or when we become out of balance instead of trying to get rid of what's out of balance our focus should be getting back into balance because then we the body just does what it's supposed to do when we focus on pushing that disease down so that we don't see it right it just goes into something else so for me the best way to try and prevent cancer is to not ignore small diseases so my dog has an ear infection oh i went to the vet he gave it some suralan which is like a, a steroid antibiotic and it's fine it's perfectly fine it's gone i never had a problem since mm -mm. that's not true so it's not wrong that you went and did that i'm not saying it was it's wrong but what i try and really tell people if you've ever done something like that if you've ever gone oh my gosh now what do i do you know my dog used to have chronic bladder infections and it's had tons of antibiotics and it, it's like okay calm down so let's just go back and look at that situation and let's you can actually wind up treating the animal or or giving the animal or giving the body what you would have given it back then and the body is smart enough that it'll then take it to the original core disease, the original core problem. So when we talk about cancer prevention and everyone trying to do what's what we want to do, we don't we don't look at a bladder infection maybe being the first symptom of cancer or we don't look at an itchy skin or <coughs> you know we don't look at something simplistic as the first signs of something going array, right? And that's what we should be we that's what we could be doing then to just get that homeostasis back into its its natural state. Right. So so when I think of cancer, when you have a diagnosis of cancer, I often say, like, here you're sick, and then all of a sudden you're what what would be better going, okay, so let's look at the body and let's see what we can do to put that body back in balance rather than oh my god let's just like attack it and blow it up and and you know you're focusing on killing something rather than how nature works and in 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 bringing it back to its natural homeostasis so it can take care of itself right? yeah the way you described it to me initially which is the the i think it's it's how i think of cancer prevention now too which is like how can we support the body so it can do its own thing? Boom. You know, like just yeah. keep supporting the body and do all the good things for the body. And, you know, that's the best thing you can do. And and I have to say this, your by the time you got your your x-rays, like I was I was trying to be as gentle with you as I possibly could. But when you sent me the x-rays, it's like we the there's different kinds of cancers right mm. and where they are and how invasive they can be and how quickly something can happen from that right is is has a lot to do with the type of cancer you know and because you know with with your guy how much there was there and and how invasive it already was yeah I'm going to be really super straight with you. His, the way he declined 
is is was really good. And yeah. if, if, if yeah, you had... it happened really quick, and and you know, it's if if you're in that position, the thing that everyone said you'll know, you'll know, which is so frustrating to hear. You'll know when when it when it's time. Cause you're like, what does that mean is now, do I know now, do I, you know, and, and not trusting yourself. The, the way I knew was rush went from, he was still bouncy to there was no bounce. There was no bounce. And, and, and this is for like a, like, you know, bouncy for a 12 year old. Um, but on uh, Saturday, he trotted from the house to the kennel, which is like a hundred yards. And by Tuesday, it took him eight, 10 minutes to get there. And I went, we tried, you know, we tried. Yeah. And I think that's, it's, it, it, the amount of trying really put me at peace, but I could also see if I didn't have the support from the people I did, it would have put me in a, in a bad financial situation too, which is something to consider. And I don't think your dog wants to leave this world knowing you're broke and you got to eat ramen noodles and you know whatever for the next six years to to cope for it but we do really wild things for our pets because we love them but i but we need to continue and you can't continue and live the lessons that they taught us if you max out your credit cards buying this that and the other thing right i think it's but you couldn't have done there's nothing that you could have done, even if you put a million dollars into it. Right. That's what I'm saying. Still be, and still and that ramen noodles. to me, that's what makes me the saddest is not yeah. just being broke. I mean, that, that, that's not good. And your dog wouldn't want you to be broke, but that doesn't, that's not what upsets me as much as, as who, who are we actually doing this for? Like if anyone had suggested that you do anything invasive with your dog, with what I saw, yeah, I would have lost my my cookies, right? Because <laughs> it's true. Because whether you had a billion dollars to do it or not, you would not be doing a, a you would have been doing a disservice to to yeah. your dog. You know, and that's what my vets told me, and that's you know, um, and and that's the part where you know, it all happened beautifully in the way that like, I got to learn so much about cancer in two weeks um, because I'm an educator, right? I mean, I, I teach people about dog training uh, every every day, but, but what's funny is a lot of people, um, I tell them out the get-go when we do a consult is like, we're gonna be talking a lot about health, just so you know because mm -hmm. your dog's health is a direct impact to their behavior. Their behavior and there's no yeah. way you're getting out of here without learning a bunch about health. So if you only wanted to learn how to get your dog to come when called, maybe go see somebody else because we're talking health. Um, and, and that was the thing that now I can start talking about prevention and, and things like that uh, a lot more, you know, um, sure. which I'm excited about. And I'm excited for us to do more. I'm, I'm gonna put out a little mini series on on YouTube, uh, and then in my online course, just on the things that I went through and the things that I tried and the pros and cons to all of them. Um, and to just have some, have some real talk about, about cancer, because what I really appreciated was the practical lessons that you, um, that you told me, you know, like, and I think those need to be shared as many places as possible. Spend time with your dog. Don't just get caught up in the research. What lessons are they, are they here to teach you that you'll know when you know, um, when it's time and that who, you know, these are just coming off the top of my head. <laughs> Give me a lot of really good lessons. Um, when, um, Sorry, Steffi, Steffi, distract me. <laughs> right. Sorry. Uh, no, it's okay. I'm trying to think what the last one was. There was, um, know your plan. You no, know, you know, when you'll know, I mean, have a, have a plan. Oh, was, was like, who are you doing this for? Because I, I, there's, I definitely could have pumped his stomach, done force feeding, done IV. Like I could have stretched All it out. You could still you technically be be, he could technically still be alive on like life support. Um, and that would have been for me because he was, 
he was ready and he might have even yeah. been ready the day before then um but it was uh that was a big one and and you know it was a really almost strange conversation that we had before as I was you know ready to leave to take him there which was like I'm proud of you said I'm proud of you for for doing this because it's a really hard thing that you're gonna do knowing that I could have stretched it on you know I could have demanded that we gone for surgery and PEI we, I could have demanded that we done all of these things that would have been for me grasping at straws hoping and praying yeah. putting my whole everything into this animal that already gave me everything yeah, yeah. I know can, can we take a few questions yeah would that be okay yeah yeah great session you guys you guys are amazing thanks for sharing as well Evan super yeah. It means a lot to a lot of us. <laughs> it does. That's what I, I said. You I probably the didn't need to share. You probably didn't even read my email. I said that you were really brave to come on and yeah, talk with us. Yeah, and we're and we're we're, Thank we're you. grateful for the knowledge. It's it's important. It's helping. It's helping a lot of us. <clears throat> Ooh, I'm gonna need my Kleenex box. Kathy has a question. What can I do to help my 14-year-old Pomeranian slash Chihuahua with bladder cancer? Now, I know you guys talked, this question came in real early in the session. I know you guys talked a lot about not, well, doing the best you can to prevent it, but also. Well, it's with bladder. Sorry, I'm just going to inter I'm just going to interrupt yeah. for one second. Um, I'm going to gracefully bow out because I'm not the medical expert here, but I really um, if anyone has anything that they want to say um, to me or whatever, they, they can reach out. Just go to, it's written everywhere. Just go to Doggett Style. <laughs> um, it's literally <laughs> covered everywhere. Um, just go to Doggett Style. There's the Facebook page, the, mm -hmm. the, the website, the podcast, all that stuff. And uh, yeah, just lots of love to everyone. Uh, stay safe, stay strong. And uh, thank you again wonderful crew behind all the people behind the scenes that make this stuff happen and um julie steph always nice to see you and we'll talk soon thanks, okay. evan. thanks again bye guys bye i put evan's i put evan's uh facebook page in the chat for everyone now julie well, any ideas on the bladder cancer kathy's so, palm chi yeah yeah, there's, there are, there's lots you can, um, well, the first thing you have to remember is just watching to be sure that he doesn't become completely blocked, or he, he or she, does it say he or she? No. So there are specific homeopathic remedies for, for bladder cancer. Um, there's, uh, the, it can really come and go when it comes to like estrogen or progesterone or, or hormones. So I'm not sure whether your vets are looking at a hormonal piece to this. If they're not, you could, you could definitely talk to them about that. But remedies that really help are, are things like Arnica and Aconite. Um, it really, Arnica and Aconite are just a brilliant, brilliant two remedies to, to use in any kind of cancer. It's, it's, it's really, really helpful. Uh, you can get, <clears throat> our go-to has Arnica and Aconite both in them, and you can't really overdo it. You would just give it, if your, if your pup has specific symptoms, like I would imagine they're having to go out to urinate a lot or, or acting like they have to, to urinate and they go to urinate and nothing comes out. So what you want to try and do is support that inflammatory response as much as you possibly can and the pain associated with that. And, um, you know, make sure that, that I don't know whether they're wearing a diaper at that point, at this point, if they're at that level, but, you know, always trying to make sure that if, if they do urinate in the house, that it's not a, it's not an issue. I'm sure that it's not with you. So either putting up a, a diaper or something on so that they don't feel like they can, they're not embarrassed or they're not feeling like they're doing something wrong if they have to pee in the house, because that's, that's an important one. But um, there's definitely 
homeopathic remedies that you can, do we have our, do we have our course on our website that the cancer course? Mm, I'll have to, I'll have to. Have Okay. So, so like I said, there are, there are certain remedies that, that are specific for, for cancer, for bladder cancer that you could look up and, um, and try, but Arnica and Aconite can do some pretty, pretty amazing, pretty, really pretty amazing things for, for bringing down the inflammation, the swelling and the weight of the, that the tumor pushes. Cause sometimes a tumor can push from the bladder and that weight is what's pressing that the, that the urethra can't actually, uh, uh, all the urine can't come out at one time. So conium is a good remedy. If you wanna look up conium, cantharis is a good remedy if you wanna look up, but if you're gonna actually do remedies, I would, I would reach out to a homeopath for sure. And I'll put Sarah Griffiths, who also yep. hangs out in our Facebook community. She's a homeopath. Yep. Um, and works very closely with Julie on a regular basis. And her website is theanimalsynergist.com. Julie, Angela's got a question. What are your thoughts when someone whose heart is broken because they've lost their dog and then they start looking for another dog right away? The reason I ask is because I'm having to rehome my dog, which breaks my heart. So I wanna make sure the best for my boy. I'm confused. <laughs> Sorry. So Angela, Angela, are you still here? So I understand the first part. Your thoughts. About I understand someone, the yeah, I understand that part, but then I don't understand the reason. The rehoming. Why? Yeah. Angela, I don't know how quick you are at typing. Let me give you the or she can go on the mic. There, there she is. You go. She's muted though. Angela, you should have permission to unmute yeah. if you want. Hey. Hi. Can you Hi. Hear me? I can. Hi. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, unfortunately, I I have a disability and I'm not able to um, provide as much uh, support that I can for my dog. He needs way, way, way much more um, space and places to run and stuff like that. So my biggest concern right now is that. I, if I do this, um, I, I want somebody who will do raw feeding and have the same ideals of um, decreased, like the minimum amount of vaccin vaccinations and things like that. Um, so it's come to my attention that there is a friend of a friend that um, that friend has just recently lost their pet um, and is, might be interested. And I'm thinking, well, what about the grieving process and what's too soon? And maybe I should be a little bit, um, not concerned, but just wary, uh, careful. <laughs> do, the, do these people subscribe to the whole less vaccines and raw food and stuff? Uh, I, that's what I'm in the process of finding out okay. right now. Well, so. that to me would be more important than the too soon part. Okay. That's, that's a really personal thing. Like I know, I know people that wouldn't, weren't able to get another animal for two years, five years. Yeah. After they yeah. lose their animal. And I know really, 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 really massive animal lovers that mm. would go out the next day and, and, and get something from, get a, get a dog or a cat from a shelter right? right? and, and love it equally. And it, the transition be like seamless when it right. comes to that. Um, you know, that is a little bit different than, I mean, these, these animals that are in a, um, Julie's volume is really low. It's weird. Is that better? Whoever's yeah. chatting. Is that better? You can hear me now, guys. I can hear, I can okay. hear you better. Okay. Um. Uh. So, I I think I, I think that might be a bit different because 
you know, you have so much love to give when you lose your animal and then the, an animal in a, in a shelter would be, you know, in such need of that love. So that, 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 that space of crossing over like that can sometimes be really incredible and really beautiful. Uh, with your dog, it's a little different if it's not an emergency to, to rehome them like right away, I would, I would be super careful about making sure he goes to the perfect home. Yeah. And I mean, in the meantime, I'm, I'm trying to figure out whether I should, um, have him neutered, um, because everybody's saying that that will calm him down, but then is that, the same why, you're, is that why you're rehoming him? Because he's, he's got a lot of energy um well that's part of it yeah like we um I was hoping to have a dog that was uh like service oriented and um and he just he he, he just needs to run and I I feel like I'm holding him back I I feel so bad for him what and is he? Um, a golden yeah so um, and how old is he? He'll be three tomorrow. So. So that would be another thing. I mean, yeah. You, I mean, I'm, I think that it's important that for a, for any dog that's not that's intact, um, to be able to go into a situation where he's safe, right? Meaning, you know, if, 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 even if he's on a big farm, are they going to be able to watch him? That he doesn't wander right because mm. he's, he's intact um my dog is not neutered either and and he's he's a handful he's he's really a <laughs> and and i live on 100 acres and he's still a handful wow. so you know it it depends i mean it probably would would calm him down but he's probably also needing a lot more energy uh, yeah too but i don't know i i it, that's a hard call, you know, could, yeah. could somebody take them and take them for hikes and then bring them back home to you? I don't know. Like it's, did, have you exhausted all options of, of well, he's been things? Yeah. He's been kicked out of a couple of play, to, <laughs> play groups and stuff. Okay. So <laughs> you know what? I would really, I would really contact, like I would contact Evan. I, I would, I would ask him, he'll, he'll be super straight with you um and and the other thing though is if you are if you are going to neuter him if that is a choice that you're going to make because you think that he's going to be safer i mean i don't know why he's gotten kicked out and this is be something that you probably should talk to evan about but um uh i i think that if you are i think that would be a big shift for him to go to a new home Mm -hmm. and be and be neutered oh like, all I at the same time i think okay. that's a pretty massive life change i would be um i think if it were if it were me i would probably um uh have if, if you have a lot of people and including evan that supports that you know he might be a happier dog if he's neutered and might be able to go into more you know what i think about i think about I think about, I don't like neutering oh, like early either, but mm -hmm. I also think about their freedom. So if them, if, if a person can't control an unneutered dog, if it's, if it's more hyper or it gets into fights or other dogs fight, a lot of times neutered dogs will fight with unneutered dogs because they smell different. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a, it's something to take on that you have to take on. If you, if you choose to not spay or neuter your dogs. So I, th I think that um, if you, if you decide that that's best for him, because he will, it'll allow him more freedom, like the ability to go back to a daycare, to be, be able to go and run in the forest with a dog walking. If that, if, if neutering him causes that to happen, then I would definitely say that I would neuter him for sure. And then, and then I would see what he was like, 
with you mm-hmm. even see if he could be re if you really really love him and see if I he do. Could, and see if he could be reintroduced right i would mm-hmm. definitely call evan ask him what he thinks about that but that's what i would do i would probably neuter him and then okay. find someone to help you reintroduce him into different situations i probably wouldn't put him back into the situations he got kicked out because dogs can remember each other okay. i would probably put him into different situations to and see you know see if he would be then be able to be taken out with dog walkers and stuff that and get the exercise that he needs to be able to stay with you okay okay yeah i mean i love him dearly and and uh, after three years my 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 cat is finally coming out a little bit so it's like oh oh dear yeah i would i would try that first Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Angela. Thank you so much, Julie and and Steph. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, Sandy has a question about, so the same question as that, that was earlier, Julie, uh, the dog has bladder cancer, but she has read that L-glutamine should be avoided with cancer. Should I maybe think about not giving gut soothe then? Mm. Can you speak to that? Oh, you could try switching. Well, it, again, it really depends. If the, the great thing about gut soothe is that it has N acetyl glucosamine in it. The amount of L glutamine in gut soothe isn't very high. And because it's all really, really synergistically put together. But what would be very, very helpful for, for, for your dog would be um, um, the N-acetyl glucosamine. So what you could do is you could switch from gut soothe into our easy peasy protocol. And in our easy peasy protocol, it's got, it, ha- it still has slippery elm and it still has soothing herbs in it like gut soothe does, but it has N-acetyl glucosamine in it and it has herbs that, that will support the bladder a little bit more. And what why it's really important this is most most of the time bladder ca- cancer does affect the interstitial lining of the bladder so it, it it's invasive into the lining of the bladder and n-acetyl glucosamine does amazing things for bringing inflammation down in the bladder wall so it might be something to think about because it's not too uh, too too far removed from from gut soothe, but it doesn't have the L-glutamine in it. Awesome, Julian, just to confirm, the easy peasy protocol, um, what you're talking about with the anacetyl glucosamine is the powder that comes with that protocol. Yeah. Along with with the other um, items. Yeah. Awesome, okay, quick. Which is all for bladder, bladder health, so it would be helpful. Along with, along with go-to. Your go-to, yeah. yeah. And I put that link in the chat as well for your go-to. Arnica and aconite, am I yeah. right? Great. Allison, you talked a little bit about superoxide dismutase earlier being an antioxidant. Um, is it, I believe, sorry, I'm getting confused. I believe that glutathione, glutathione. is also an antioxidant. It can be, yeah. Allison, Allison, help me out here. Here, let me look at it. Where is it? Oh, there she is. Okay. <laughs> She's muted though. There we go. Allison? Ah, oh, man. I'm so- looking, oh, there. How, how is superoxide is being different than something else, like glutathione? Um, glutathione. Oh, Okay, so glutathione needs a lot more precursors and a lot more balanced. Um, it's more of a balancing act with the rest of the of your cells, mm-hmm. in order to. A lot of animals can't even can't produce it. Can't um, glutathione's a hard one to be sure that you're giving the correct one first of all, and that you're giving the 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 precursors like sulfur and like um, vitamin C and different things to be sure 
that the glutathione even does anything. Whereas superoxide dismutase is a direct antioxidant that um, uh, is needs less support from other cells and other metabolic processes in order to be able to really, really focus on, on free radical damage and, and oxidative stress. Awesome, Julie, thanks. Um, a lot of questions. I just wanna tell everyone that we have a Facebook group that admins go in daily and can offer resources uh, and tools to you. It's just search the the Adored Beast Collective on Facebook. Please join us there. And we also have a product specialist on the team named Kaylin, and she answers the questions at adoredbeast.com email. And we'd be happy to give you a hand as well. Julie, what do you say, one more? Yeah, I was just reading, we can do a few more. Um, I was just reading where it said this one about cancer. Um, from Brenda. All right. Like Brenda. if we're talking about cancer. So my Mally developed cancer at 15 years old, bone cancer, excuse me. I truly thought we were cancer free due to the loss of muscle mass in his rear legs and the cancer was in his front leg. We could not amputate. We lost him five months later, followed your homeopathic remedies and gave CBD. Just wondering why cancer attacked him at 15. I thought we were good since he had passed cancer. The uh, he had point passed, at ten. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there's a genetic mechanism in in everybody, right? And I think the fact that um, first thing is is, and I don't want you to take this in the wrong way, but I where it says due to the loss of muscle mass in his rear legs and the cancer was in his front leg, you couldn't amputate, amputate. And I think that that's, that was a gift. That was a big gift because to amputate a dog, dog's leg at 15 years old, I've worked with a lot of osteosarcoma and I'm actually involved uh, in with a university study um, with osteosarcoma for dogs. And even if you take x-rays, the amount of, of dogs when they remove the leg, it winds up in their lungs within, within a month. And they're just learning how to, to um, you know, recover from, from losing a leg and then they die from, from uh, lung cancer. And so often it can't even be detected. It, you know, you can take it, you can take an x-ray and it looks like it's clear, but, but, but the, the cells are so small that they're undetected. And as soon as the leg comes off, then there's no um, external uh, um, sort of uh, portal for the cancer to go to. And then it, 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 it just then it just grows exponentially faster in the lungs. So at 15 years old, I would, I would, be, I would, I'm, I think that was actually, that was actually a positive thing. So don't, don't be sad about that. And, you know, why, why it was 15 rather than 10. I think, I think it's just, that's what he was going to get. I don't think he did anything wrong. I did. I don't think that was just the type of, um, I see that you lost him five months later and you know, I'm hoping that that five months, I mean, osteosarcoma can be incredibly painful, like really, really painful. So I'm hoping at least the remedies may have maybe helped him with some pain in that five months. Uh, but, you know, to, to do, to be 15 and a half um, is, a, is a great age. And I think that you, you were doing something right. So please try not to go back and go, why did he pass his 10 year mark and then get cancer at 15? It's probably because that was his predisposition. You know, I don't think that you did anything wrong. Thank you, Julie. All right, let's see. Uh... There was one. Um... So Willie has possible histios. 
Oh yeah, Jamie, yeah, yeah. So from the waiting, the second pathology lab opinion as an oncologist suspects an autoimmune stegocytosis. Ultrasound and liver, spleen were clear. He had skin lesions for months. Um, he does chemo and steroids Friday. Best NAB product probiotic to use. Other products we do use as phy phytoplankton. Um, liver taunt, uh, Jamie, uh, I'm looking at your question. We'll, the short the short version of it, he, he has um, a type of cancer that is very histamine related and um, uh, and she's asking what else they can do. They just, they started chemotherapy and steroids and she's wanting about probiotics and other products. So phytoplankton, definitely a million trillion billion percent. But um, when it comes to anything histamine, you want to be supporting his liver, but your, your, your integrative vet, I'm sure is looking into herbs. So I would be making sure that I would be supporting the liver because the liver is something that is, is incredibly important to, to regulate histamine response. Um, as far as probiotics, I would be using two different ones. Actually, I probably would use, um, uh, the phytos flora. I would start with phytos flora. And if, um, I mean, I know when we talk about certain, you know, uh, glutamine and stuff, but if, if the, if the chemo is starting to affect it, affect his gut, like if he starts getting nausea or diarrhea, then, then, um, uh, gut sooth can really help help support that, but also our go-to, I can't say enough about our go-to when it comes to cancer than in, in supportive care, with not, not curative care, but supportive care to help, to help support pain and decrease inflammation. So those would be the, the three things that I would do. Um, as far as homeopathy goes, there's, there's lots and lots of homeopathic remedies for histamine induced cancers or histamine related cancers that, that I would look into for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Thank you, Julie. That was great. You're welcome. All right. Uh, it is 930 now. Yeah. I think there's, um, okay, so let's, I, there was one that I just wanted to see. Um, hold on a second. There's so many. So, yeah. So go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. I was going to say, well, Julie finds the question. I'm going to just reiterate this. You can email us questions at adoredbeast.com or please join our Facebook community, the Adored Beast Collective. 10 days, how will this affect the protocol she's on? Shall I stop the protocol? I'll, Suzanne had a question about a protocol and then her dog has an anal gland problem, but um, I don't know what protocol, oh, yeasty beast protocol. Um, will it affect, no, no, that should be, that should be, it should be fine to stay on. But, you know, if, it, if you wanna wait, for the 10 days and then restart it, you, you can definitely do that. The problem with this is that EC Beast doesn't have any probiotics in it. So the, well, it has Saccharomyces elis, but that, that, that's not something that is gonna be beneficial for post antibiotics. I would, once you're finished the antibiotics or even during the antibiotics within a four hour period, I would put them on phytosflora for sure to try and to try and be sure that we're um, helping out all of the friendly bacteria the antibiotics is destroying. So I would be putting them on phytosflora and also um, uh, give her the give her um, anal glands. I would I would be giving her liver tonic because it, you know, you want to try and detox from the antibiotics. And then once this is done, I would definitely be looking at why does she have an anal gland infection? Because that could be, you know, that, that could have something to do with yeast if that's why maybe that you were on that. But remedies like silica and heparsulf are incredible for anal gland infections. 
uh, you can, you know, Dr. Pitcairn has a book and Don Hamilton has a really good book. Those are two really good books to look at for, especially Don Hamilton's with, um, he's got a great book for, for using, for people to use with their pets at home. It's called Homeopathy for Small Animals. It's, it's my favorite book to use for, for um, if you wanna do some of your own homeopathics at home. Thanks, Julie. Very helpful. I, I put that in the chat for everyone as well. Great. Good. All right. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap us up. Okay. For so uh, so everyone knows we're here. The first Wednesday of every month. We'll be back the first Wednesday of March. We may have a topic. We'll see what happens. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us, and thank you, Julie and yes. Evan for the phenomenal, very powerful session that, that helped a lot of us to make. Okay, you're Thank welcome. You. See you later. Good night, Bye. everyone. Bye.